What's up folks, Jeff Everhart here. In this video, I'll show you how to implement real-time toast notifications with Nuxt and Vue. This project is based on a previous video where we built an in-app feed, so be sure to check that out in the video description below. In this video, we'll cover installing the Shad CN UI toast component, then bind that toast component to real-time feed events from Knock, and then look at how we can conditionally display toasts based on the message payload. Toasts are a common part of most apps, but making them respond to real-time events from other users is pretty cool. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna pick up where we left off in the previous video, and that means that we've got pretty much a fully functioning activity feed inside of this activity feed component. So to add toasts into this, we're gonna first hop out to the Shad CN view docs, uh, go to components, and we'll scroll on down to the toast component and figure out what we need to do to add that. So the first thing I'll do is copy this npx command, and we can hop back into VS Code, and we'll paste that into our terminal. Now, one of the things I just discovered as I was preparing to record this video is that there's a little bit of a bug right now uh, with the latest version. Uh, so I'm gonna go back one version, but I'm sure by the time you watch this video, you'll be able to just run the command we just copied. And we'll go ahead and press enter. And that will add our toast component for us and all of the different things we need. So let's hop back out to the docs and see what we need to do to begin using that. So it looks like the first thing that we'll wanna do is implement this toaster component. So we'll go ahead and just grab that and hop back into our activity feed component. Scroll all the way down and you know, maybe, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and it looks like I've got one there and we'll just replace that uh, with the self-closing version. Um, and because we're using Nux, it auto imports for us and we don't need to do anything. Uh, from there, it looks like then we wanna import this use toast hook. And then when we actually call the toast, uh, let's see, we extract uh, this toast function from that hook. And then we can say uh, just toast and we'll pass it an object. Um, okay, so cool. So let's go ahead and just grab this line right here. Hop back into uh, our component and scroll up into our setup script. And we'll go ahead and I guess put that up here. Um, because we're just creating this toast function. And I think what we'll end up doing is calling this toast function inside of our setup script. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually grab this implementation while we're at it. Um, and then we'll experiment with that just for a second. Okay, so we've got this in our clipboard and I'll go ahead and just paste it here so that we don't lose it. Um, where we're calling that toast function. Um, Okay, and so now what we wanna do is we want to bind to real-time events. Um, and we have a couple of event handlers up here that we're already using. This one uh, targets message status changes, um, and this one targets both real-time events and page events. Um, so what we could do is we could uh, modify this one to accommodate us, but since that's listening to two events, we'll actually just add a third event listener down here. Um, and I'll sort of show you how that works. So we'll go knock feed on, and then we'll listen to the items received real time event. And then we'll take this callback and we'll just pass it in the whole data object, which will console log out. So that's the first thing we'll do is say console log data. And then what we'll do is let's come down here and snag our toast function and let's, uh, paste that in there. So when we get a real-time feed event, we'll console log out the data that we get, and then we should also show our toast. Um, so let's go ahead and click hit npm run dev to start up our local development server. Then let's go ahead and open that in Google Chrome. Uh, use toast is not defined. Okay, so it does look like we'll need to go ahead and import this. So let's hop back into this and update our import statements here. And if we refresh, all right, great. We get our toast display, we get our feed displaying just the way that we want. So now let's go over here and kick off a test run of our in-app workflow. Um, and we'll just go run test and then we should see over here. Okay, cool. That worked just the way that we wanted. You know, our, our test toast is popping up. We got a real-time feed item 
And then if we open up the console, we can see what got logged out. So this is, uh, if we look back in VS Code, this is just all of the data that gets passed to this event handler. Uh, and there are a couple of interesting things in here that I wanted to call out. So the first is this event property. Um, and so if we wanted to include this in the other items.receive.star event handler, we could just you know, create an if statement where if this is the real time event, then we would do all of the stuff we're doing with the toasts. But we also get this array of items, which are our feed items, and then we get this uh, metadata object. Um, and so what we're gonna actually use for the rest of this is going to be this items array. Let's hop back into VS Code, and instead of data here, let's go ahead and pull out items. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll say items, since this is an array, we'll do items for each, and then this is gonna take an item. And then in the callback, this is where we'll actually call our toast function. Um, and this is an array because technically you could get batches of real-time feed events. Um, that's not always gonna happen, but it's just a possibility. And so we wanna be able to handle that in that case. Um, okay, so here now we've bound this to um, the real-time feed events and uh, that's displaying the way we want it to. Um, but let's actually sort of dig into that feed object, that feed item for a second and see what's in there. Um, so we can see that we've got activities, which are sort of the activities that generated um, this particular feed. And if we had a batch step, there would be multiple activities. Um, we've got this list of actors and some of these things we already used in our, the creation of our feed. Um, we can also see here that we're getting this entire data payload back. So here we've got this message um, and we've got our variable key, uh, which is just some test data. And you can see that this is all what's getting passed through when I do this workflow via the test runner. Um, and then we've got this show toast Boolean. Um, so let's hop back in here and let's go ahead and set that to false for right now. Um, and then also let's make some adjustments to the actual body of our toast so that we can use this. Now, one of the things to call out is that in our feed right here, uh, this block, which is called the body block, is actually rendered down as HTML. Now, a lot of the toast, toast libraries, including this one, don't really like you to display HTML, so we've really got to pass it uh, strings. And so we'll go ahead and format the message um, so that we can do that. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna come off screen here and just grab um, just a couple of lines that we'll use for this that I've already got prepared with some emojis. Um, and if we hop back into VS Code, we'll change this description out uh, to be this. And then we'll also grab this um, title property and we'll replace it with this. Okay, and so what we can see here is that, you know, the title is gonna say new feed item inserted at, we're gonna make a new date, then in, you know the item.inserted at property to locale string. Uh, snap, this real-time feed is mind-blowing. And then let's actually just change this to a template literal real quick. And just because we can, let's go ahead and uh, let's do item.data.message so that we can display our message property. Um, all right, so let's go back in here and inside of this, let's go ahead and click another test run. So right now we've got this, this show toast Boolean set to false. Um, here we can see we're passing in a message. So let's click run test. And then we can see that we might need to refresh our UI to make that change take effect. So let's do that one more time, click run test. Awesome, and then we see we get our real time feed uh, event and everything looks the way that we should. And now what you might wanna do in an application, right? Because now we're just, just displaying this information twice. So we've got it once in the feed. We've got it once in the toasts here as well. And so what you might wanna be able to do is differentiate between different types of messages or different types of feed items, display some as toasts, some as not. Um, and that is something we can do inside with this show toast boolean. So let's change this back to true. And let's go ahead and uh, just leave that as is for right now. Um, but what we'll do here is let's just wrap all of this inside an if statement. So we'll come down here, we'll say if um, item, uh, sorry. So we wanna do this inside of our loop. So we'll do this inside the loop, we'll say if 
um, item dot data dot show toast equals true. Then we'll show our toast. And if not, we won't. Uh, so we'll come over here. We'll grab our toast function. We can copy and paste that up there and then delete that. Go ahead and give that a save. Hop back out to our UI and let's go ahead and refresh our local host here. Um, and then we can go ahead and let's go ahead and send a toast notification that should show based on this Boolean. All right, cool. That worked exactly as we expected. We got the real time feed message here and we got our toast. All right, let's go ahead and toggle this back to false. And then let's update our message here so we can see it amongst the other messages that are all the same. This uh, should not show the toast. So let's go ahead and click run test. And if we toggle back over here, amazing. We see that really quickly added to our in-app feed, but we do not get a toast message there. Um, so awesome. And if we hop back into VS code, let's just recap real quick what we're doing here. Um, all we did, all that we needed to do was install the shad CN UI toast component. And then we just added an additional event handler onto the knock feed that looks for uh, real time feed events. And then we're looping for those feed items. And for each item, if that, uh, items payload, uh, show toast property is equal to true, then we're actually going to display that toast. And here we just nicely format this item dot inserted at property and the message to display them in the tie and the title and description properties on the toast. Um, so the cool thing about this is, you know, we're using this to display a real time toast, but this could also be any other UI element that you wanted to hide or show based on these sort of real time events. Um, so lots of in app messaging opportunities for banners or modals or pop ups. You know, if you're trying to draw somebody's attention to a particular activity that happened in the application, this is a great way to do it. And the neat thing about uh, Knox real time feed API in conjunction with toasts is that now you can show these toast messages um, from external events, right? A lot of times toasts are shown when a user takes an action, maybe they make an API request and when that comes back successful, you show a toast. Well, now this could be another user, you know, added something to your application added a database entry, and now this user or all of your users are getting shown a real-time notification about that event. So lots of flexibility there, lots of really cool stuff that you can do. Awesome, thanks for watching. Toasts are a pretty common part of most apps, but you can also use Knox real-time feed API to power all kinds of in-app messaging. In this video, we covered the basics of installing and configuring ShadCN UI toasts, using Knox JavaScript client to bind to real-time feed events. And then we looked at how to conditionally display those toasts based on the message payload. I'm excited to see what you'll build using Nuxt and Knock, so be sure to let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and knock on.